guys we have 11 viewers in the room what is up everybody uh we are at the top of the hour we are at the eight o'clock hour here so guys uh welcome to a special edition of the half guard better half hour uh thank you to brianna uh miss Bree, for the title uh yes Alex, we are social distancing uh, while living in the same house. We are practicing good social distancing. <laughs> um, so with that being said, guys, uh, my special guest for the evening. Um, so watch the language, please. Uh, my special guest for this evening is none other than the one, the only, my lovely, beautiful wife, Elaine. Uh, Elaine, welcome to the Half Guard Half Hour. Uh, a lot of people were interested in hearing from you. So brought you on as a guest. So welcome to my show. Thank you for joining me. And as always, thank you for being supportive through this crazy adventure I'm doing. Happy to join you on any adventure. That's why I said yes. Uh, <laughs> and um, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, you, you, you signed the paper. And some of the people that are on here were guests at that very wedding. So... Uh, Alex, thank you for being a first time listener. Guys, as we get started here, uh, as a friendly reminder about the Half Guard Half Hour, drop your questions for us in the comments box below. Um, we'll answer them as we get towards the end of the show. Uh, again, all questions, drop them down below, drop them in the comments, and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability. Uh, so with that being started, let's jump right in. Uh, Elaine, I know you very well. Our, our nice studio audience who is out there watching may not know you. You are my lovely wife. So start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your background. Tell us what you do for your nine to five. Um, and tell us about some of your awesome hobbies. Okay. Um, so I'll start by saying that I am originally from Southern California, um, Riverside, California. Woo -woo. Um, and... I moved to New York about, I want to say seven years ago, maybe eight in December. Um, I work for Starbucks. I've been with the company um, 12 years now. Needed a change in my life. Uh, had an opportunity, a coworker that was moving here. And um, so I took a chance, uh, moved out here on December 4th. Uh, went to work at Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue and 57th, um, two days later and have been living and loving New York ever since. Um, so that's my nine to five. I work for Starbucks. I work at the uh, New York Reserve Roastery. There are um, three roasteries in the US and three international. So there's one in New York, Tokyo, Shanghai, Milan, Chicago, and of course the first one being in Seattle. Um, been uh, doing that for over a year now and loving it super, um, new experience um and that's been wonderful uh and when i moved to new york i uh started dating and that's when i met mike here and the rest is history <laughs> uh again guys thank you for joining us uh great introduction uh so guys again just a friendly reminder if you're getting a lot of echoes or feedback please let us know uh we are in two separate rooms in the same house uh but so elaine talk to me a little bit about your hobbies your sister just pointed out one of your lovely hobbies so uh yes. or not hobbies but one of the amazing things about you so uh tell us a little bit about that yeah so i'm i'm sorry you would ask me that question and i didn't fully answer it my apologies baby um so for hobbies i uh in college i studied for a bachelor's of music in vocal performance i'm an opera singer i'm a soprano um i primarily sang Puccini, Verdi, um, Schumann, Schubert, love art song, love opera, also love musical theater. Um, my first job was Disney. I worked at Disneyland in Anaheim for four years. That was my very first job. I loved it. Um, and uh, I also sew. Um, I sew vintage aprons, pajamas, raincoats. And now um, with COVID-19, I am sewing face masks. Uh, and that's taking up a good portion of my time. I'm happy to donate them and um, help as much as I can. <laughs> um, so 
Uh, with that being said, people are asking to put you on the spot. I will not because I am not sleeping on the couch tonight. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, um, talk to us about what brought you to opera, what brought you to singing. How did you become a singer? Um, and what really, you know, instead of being maybe a folk singer or a rock singer, what attracted you to opera so much? Uh, so I am the youngest of four girls, um, three older sisters, and I grew up in a house that sang. Um, we watched all the Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals. We, anytime there was a new musical on Broadway, my parents would make sure to put it on for us. Um, so I grew up listening to Shirley Jones. Um, Marilyn Horn, really amazing singers. Uh, I was exposed to a lot of different music, um, but I think it, opera in particular is uh, something that you can potentially teach someone to do, but there is something physiologically that they have to have to be able to do it. And that was something um, in high school, I realized I had the ability. Um, and the reason for that was, um, like I said, I'm the youngest of four, so kind of whatever my older sisters did, they blazed a trail. I would tend to follow along. And my two older sister, my two oldest sisters were in um, musicals, um, and my sister Dom was in choir in high school, so I naturally kind of followed that route. My, um, they were all amazing singers, and I just wanted to be just like them. So uh, Dawn started, Dawn and Shannon started taking uh, voice lessons, and um, learning arias and art art songs and things like that. Um, and so I just wanted to be like them. So I started taking voice lessons too. And uh, it was about that time that I realized, you know, that I had the ability um, and that I loved it. I had the passion for it. So that's when I decided to um, pursue music in college. Um, a unique experience. Uh, don't know if I would do it twice, but also like it made me who I am today. So um you know, I, I can't ever say that that wasn't, a, you know, a good decision. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you transitioned from, you know, college singing, that whole background with your degree. How do we get into the wonderful wide world of coffee uh, and working for an amazing company like we work for Starbucks? Where did, where, where did that journey how did you get to that point and, 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 and how did that get started for you? Yeah, so um, like I said, my first job was Disneyland. So uh, started off kind of in service of people. Um, I loved it. I grew up going to Disneyland. I'm a Disney girl through and through. And um, so I was really lucky to have that be my first job. I worked on Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, which was a 3D uh, show and hand out safety goggles and um, spiel on the microphone and welcome people in and um, pretend to be, you know, a, a scientist in a lab coat and silly stuff like that. Um, and so from there, I just kind of continued on in retail and in the service industry. Um, my next, and I've been really fortunate to work for companies that are really awesome, have really awesome values. That's something that's really important to me. And it's just kind of followed along in my career path. So after uh, Disney, um, I worked for a retail company uh, called J. Jill, sophisticated older women's clothing at the age of like 18, 19, 20. I'm there selling these clothes. It was an awesome experience. Um, and uh, a friend of mine had gotten hired with Starbucks, my best friend, and she was sharing her training literature and the different books that they were uh, giving them and the way they called each other partners and it just seemed like a really amazing company and I was looking for a change and so I applied and was hired on as a shift supervisor um, and the rest is history um, I've been with them ever awesome. since guys this is not a sales pitch for Starbucks by the way not at all. <laughs> um, so to give our lovely audience who may not know a little bit of history um, you and I met on OkCupid, yes, OkCupid.com. Um, and we went on our first date at a coffee shop. And I, I love telling this story because I think it, it's, uh, it's hysterical to me now looking back at it all these years. Uh, one, I didn't drink coffee when we first started dating. Two, um, you know, it, 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 we, we met, we, we chatted for a little bit, then we met in person. 
I'm living all the way in Queens at this time. Don't know where you live because obviously it's only, it's our very first date. You're not going to tell me that. Haul my behind all the way up to this coffee shop on Broadway um, and 145th, somewhere up there, about 149th and Broadway, um, only to find out later on that you, you know, obviously super smart on your behalf, but like um, – come to find out that this coffee shop is literally three blocks from your apartment. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's how we met. And at the time that you and I met, um, I was a blue belt in jujitsu. Yeah, uh, Alex, it was a hike. Um, I was a blue belt in jujitsu, still at Clockwork, still under Josh. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. You know, first time meeting me, maybe second date, third date, whatever it was. I, you know, I know I talked about jujitsu a lot and I still talk about jujitsu a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, so <laughs> tell me what, you know, tell me, had you won until we had started dating? Had you ever heard of jujitsu? Had you ever heard of the UFC, MMA? Um, ha have you, have you ever heard, had you ever heard of anything of that nature before we met? Um, I would say heard of it yes like you hear people say i i study karate or um people wearing mma shirts but you know that's a, that's about as far as it goes um as far as knowing anybody that was involved in jujitsu or even anything what it was about the history anything like that uh no i knew nothing of it um, so that leads me to my next question, which I think is is a good one. And I don't know if I've ever actually asked this of you. This is a great getting to know each other time here. Uh, it's good therapy. Uh, <laughs> so what were your what were your what were your first thoughts when I started talking about jujitsu and kind of describing what I did, what it was about? What were your what were your first impressions and first thoughts of me doing jujitsu uh, or just hearing about jujitsu in general? Um. So, um, it was actually one of the reasons I uh, decided to write you back and uh, start a conversation with you was you were very honest about your journey um, in your OK Cupid profile um, from big mic to you know the mic that I met to the mic that is today. Um, you were very open. You had pictures of your weight loss transformation. You talked about jujitsu. It was clear you were really passionate about it. And that made me interested. I didn't know anything about jujitsu. Um, and I wanted to meet this passionate guy and, and hear more about this um, way of living that had transformed his life. And you were very clear about that. Um, and I admired I admired the fact that you had made a change in your life and you had found something um, that you were passionate about. And so, yeah, I wanted to know more about that. Man wrestling, as your sister says, it is kind of man wrestling, but there are some ladies that can kick ass. Uh, Coach Bree, oh, yeah. who's in, in, oh, yeah. in, in with us right now, she can totally kick some ass. So talk to me about the first time I ever brought you into the jujitsu room I, the first time I ever brought you up to clockwork jujitsu to watch me train because I, I, I wanted you to kind of see it. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, we were, we were maybe a couple months into dating at the time, if I remember correctly. And I was like, I, she needs to see this. She needs to understand it. She needs to like, see what I'm, I go through and see what I deal with. Um, how that, how this plays a big portion, uh, portion on my life. Uh, sugar on a switchblade. Um, so yeah. tell me, tell me a little bit about what you thought the first time you came up to the jujitsu gym and what that experience might have been like for you. Um, oh, I'll never forget it. Uh, so we had been dating for a while. I knew a lot of the names, Josh, Seb, Russ, you know, um, your teachers. And I knew a lot of the stories, um, but I hadn't actually been up there. Um, and there was one day you invited me, um, hey, you want to come meet me and you can watch the end of the class. And I was like, sure, yeah. So um, went down to that area of town, which I was not familiar with. That was another journey for me. Um, so I got to make my own journeys from the Upper West Side down to see you. 
Um, I remember I, I got dressed up. I tried to look nice. I walked in, um, saw, you know, a room full of geese and people rolling around and people just kind of walking around, some people sitting, stretching, drinking water. Um, another part of a funny part of the story is when I got off the train, I was following this girl in a blue mini skirt and these bright green heels. And I was following her all the way down the street, noticing her outfit and like, wow, she's cute. She's all dressed up. We get in the elevator together and it turns out she's going to clockwork to see someone too. And I was like, oh, great. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it was just a funny journey to walk in behind this, this other girl all dressed up to go, you know, go see our friends in jujitsu. And, um, but the funniest thing about, about being there um, was the first thing that just totally threw me off was people coming up to me. I've seen you on Facebook. I know who you are. I'm so excited to meet you person after person. Like, I know your face. You're Mike's girlfriend, you know, great to meet you. And I was stunned. Like, who are these people? How do they know who I am? Um, but I quickly, uh, as I got to know people and got to experience, you know, uh, different milestones with clockwork with you, um, I realized what a community it was. Um, and a very incredibly supportive, incredibly um, active community, almost, you know, like a family. And um, that was the first thing that really impressed me about coming to Clockwork and even, you know, Josh introducing himself and getting to meet Josh. And um, I could tell it was really a special group of people. Um, and that told me a lot about who you were but, you know, uh, based on the people that you surrounded yourself with. Uh, so my lovely friend Dax, um, um, amazing Mr. Dax there, uh, asked, how did Mike get so lucky? I'm just going to ask what everyone is thinking. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Dax. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Irinka, uh, a wonderful blue belt of ours at Clockwork says, come by BJ, come try BJJ with us. Uh, so that leads me to my next question because um, I think that that is something that many, many, many ladies uh, in the Jiu Jitsu world have asked you, um, Brianna, Katya, and the list just goes on and on and on uh, of all the ladies you've met who do jujitsu with me uh, throughout the years and have known me throughout my jujitsu journey. Um, you never really asked, you never really seemed interested in it. Um, what's it like to just live one with somebody who does jujitsu as furiously as I do on such a, you know, such a consistent basis, you know, uh, five, six days a week doing something jujitsu related, whether it's teaching or training or anything of that nature. Um, so what is it, uh, what, what's it like living with somebody like me who, who does jujitsu and you know, what, what's it like for you not really being interested in, in doing it per se? Um, so, uh, you know, I'll never forget also the first few times I came into clockwork and, and hung out with the clockwork family, every girl around would either go to Mike or go to me and say, H have you thought about doing it? Are you interested in trying it? I remember Brianna was one of the first people I met and Brianna said to you, hey, if she's interested, she can come in. I'll roll with her. I'll be really gentle. And I, I thought that was so sweet. Um, and I can't say that um, you know, the thought hasn't crossed my mind. Um, I even talked to my therapist about it at one point. Um, uh, she was talking about how I needed to learn that um, aggression could be healthy um, because I'm a very like non-confrontational person. I don't like to ruffle feathers, um, but we were having a conversation about how aggression can be a good thing and outlets like jujitsu can help you work your aggressions out or find a healthy way to navigate, um, you know, any aggressive, aggressive emotions you have. Um, and I, I feel like I've definitely seen that with you. Um, the person you are when you are training regularly is very different than, you know, than quarantine Mike or injury Mike. Um, and I can, you know, I can definitely feel it. It's like, oh, he needs to go to jujitsu. He just needs to go like work some things out. Um, and I, 
I love that you have that outlet. I, I envy it, to be completely honest. Um, but also, to be completely honest, as much as I thought about jujitsu, um, for me, I, I don't think it's my outlet. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm never going to say never. Who knows? Um, we're still some, we're still pretty young chickens. So who never, who knows what'll happen in the future. But um, for now, I feel like, you know, it, I, as much as I thought about it, I don't think it's the outlet for me. Um, and um, that being said, I, you know, I, I long to find one, um, you know, down the line. And I, you know, I hope to one day find something that saves my life, like, like jujitsu has saved yours and so many other people. Uh, my lovely friend Charles, uh, and I was waiting, I'm surprised he didn't join earlier. Thanks, Charles. Uh, says, when did you know Mike was a hobbit and do you help him shave his feet? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, there are certain questions I glaze over, but, you know, that deserved oh, come a on, reading. I'd love to answer that one. <laughs> Um, so guys, don't forget, uh, drop some questions for us in the box. My next question really kind of, you, you talked about it a little, Mike who trains, Mike who's injured, Mike who's quarantined. What, what is it like? And then there's competition, Mike, right? Like you've lived through that, you know, I don't compete as much as most, uh, most jujitsu players out there. Uh, but that, you know, you've seen every single level. You've seen Mike cutting weight. You've seen Mike injured. You've seen Mike now sitting in quarantine, not being able to train and injured at the same time. What is it like for you as a jujitsu wife living in that world when I don't get to train, I'm injured, uh, I'm cutting weight for a competition? What is that? Describe what that's like for you. And how do you cope yourself and deal with that person? Um, yeah, there are definitely different, uh, versions of jujitsu Mike and, uh, cutting weight Mike is a really difficult person to be around. Um, but I think one thing that I'm truly grateful for is the fact that I did, that you did share your, your journey and your passion for jujitsu so early on in our relationship, because it was just something that's so ingrained in who you are. So taking you on and saying, you know, yes, I'll spend the rest of my life with you. I knew I was taking all these other things on too. And, and also I want to support you in them. Um, you know, I've always been impressed that you wanted to teach and your goal was to teach and you hope to have your own school someday and to watch you go from blue belt to purple belt to brown belt. Um, and see you finally realizing the opportunity to teach has been really amazing. Um, and I'm really grateful for it. So those moments far outweigh the difficult moments for sure. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm not sick of watching Eddie Bravo jujitsu competitions from time to time. Um, but you know, there are also times where I, you know, I get into it. Uh, you took me to my first UFC fight. And there were two uh, women fighting. I think it was straw weight. And Paige Vincent, Felice Herrig at Newark at the Prudential Center. Yeah. And uh, Paige was this tiny little thing. She looked like she was 12. And she came out and she was an animal. And, um, you know, I, I got to my feet. I was screaming. I was cheering. I, you know, I was on. Like, I, I was so into it. Um, so there are moments where I, I, you know, I do enjoy it. And, you know, we'll be watching TV and you'll point out a jujitsu move. Oh, that's a blah, blah, blah. Look at them go. And, um, you know, so it, it's in everything that we do. Um, and for me, it's, it's how do I support cutting weight, Mike? How do I support needs to train? Like, how do I support training six days a week? You know, um, don't see you till you come home at 9 30 you know five nights a week um but that was part of the deal from the get-go and i know what it's for and therefore you know like i can't i can't be anything but happy for you in those moments or you know try to support you uh so irinka asks uh two great questions because i think they're uh, and i'll let you answer both of them uh, have you ever asked or suggested to Mike to stop with BJJ when he's gotten injured? Have you ever said, you know what, it's time for you to quit? Um, no, not, not for a second. Um, because I know 
he wouldn't. Um, and I, I wouldn't ask that of him to, you know, to stop something that he loves doing. Um, and something that's so good for him. Uh, you know, I can speak from experience. Um, my father got in a really bad motorcycle accident and as his leg was shattered in pieces. Um, and as soon as he healed, as soon as he could get back on that motorcycle, he was out doing it because it was what he loved. And I thought that was crazy. Um, However, I know jujitsu is so much more than that. And it brings so much more to your life. You know, injuries are gonna come, they're gonna go. Hopefully you'll end up stronger, um, you know, or you'll learn to adjust and you'll move on. Um, do I fear that one day you'll snap your neck and, and not be able to walk? Yes, but I also know who your training partners are um, and I trust them. And I know that you put your trust in them as well. That's part of the deal. They trust you, you trust them. Um, and I think, so in that way, I, I, you know, I, I rarely do worry. Only yeah, when somebody's sitting Brianna, on your head and your face is turning purple. That's, that's when I worry. That was, uh, that was a reference for you guys. Uh, the very first time she came up to watch me train uh, as a blue belt, I'm, I, was ro I remember the role, uh, Mr. Austin, uh, Judo Austin, he had me in or was attempting a Kimura and he was sitting on my head. So uh, that was a reference to that. Big Charles asks, and uh, <laughs> I think this is also another great question. Uh, do you ever help Mike with techniques? <laughs> I remember very early on, there were days where Mike would like put his, put his arms around my neck and like show me a choke or something just to be funny. Um, but really, no, he, you know, um, he doesn't. Um, he has tried to teach me, uh, once I like got in full gi in our living room and we were, he was teaching me a, a move and he had me doing some exercises and our schnauzer was in the middle of it, trying to get in the action. Um, but other than that, no, you know, he kind of, he does his own thing. Uh, another question from lovely Arinka. Do you allow Mike to go to BJJ anytime or does he have a set schedule he is allowed to go to BJJ? Oh, that's a good question. No. Um, I, you know, once again, from the very beginning of our relationship, you had your schedule and you're, uh, from what I know of you, you're a very like habitual regimented person. And um, so in that way, your, your schedule's always been your schedule, and um, I'll see you in between times, when, whenever that is. Uh, so, no, he goes when he wants, and he stays home when he wants, and um, I'm, I'm happy to spend time with him, whatever I get. <laughs> I am, uh, as, as your lovely sister, um, as your lovely sister wrote uh, down there, I am very grumpy when I don't get to train jujitsu. Um, I am luckily wading through the waters of quarantine life be being injured. Uh, so it is actually, I think, the first time that I am injured uh, where I'm not whiny or grumpy about it because Honestly, there's no jiu-jitsu going on anyway, so I can't train being injured. Kind of got lucky all in the uh, in the first shot. Um, <laughs> we are dropping some serious relationship tips. Uh, does he let you get the underhooks when you hug? Um, <laughs> do you know what underhooks are? <laughs> I'm like, she what's does an not. underhook? Uh, um, she fights for the underhooks really, really well. She's got some, like, good underhook swims and underhook things going on. Um, so she is definitely, uh, she definitely fights for the underhooks. Um, and it's really, really great. Um, Emily has asked, I don't know if this went through, but are injuries inevitable? And when, and can we buy masks from Elaine? Uh, so um, I will take that question um, as I am both, um, the one who gets injured and the one who has been pimping my wife's masks. Uh, so the answer to both are uh, yes. It, injuries, unfortunately, and people can, uh, Charles, anybody in the comments box that trains jiu-jitsu can kind of talk to it as well. Injuries are 110% inevitable in one shape or form, whether they're super minor, big like my shoulder, 
Um, anything. I, I have uh, a friend, Gary, um, Bernie Sanders Props supporter. We love Gary. Props to Gary. Um, I knew when Gary came back uh, from his injury, uh, he was going to be a black belt someday. Gary, we were training in the competition class. Uh, Gary uh, got accidentally taken down the wrong way. He uh, not only uh, he dislocated and fractured his ankle all in the same instance, had uh, surgery, pins, the whole nine yards put into his ankle, came back. Gary just got his brown belt during the last uh, clockwork promotion. Um, what I can say is, yes, injuries are inevitable. Do everything you can, like Dak said, from stretching to warming up uh, and be as warm as you possibly can. Um, and then listen to your body, I think, is the most important piece of all of this. If you are tired, do not train. And when I, I don't mean mentally tired, because if you're mentally tired, you should train. If your body is physically tired from working out or training or running or whatever you're doing, do not train jujitsu. Every single time in my experience I have gotten injured has been when I have been tired, physically tired, not mentally tired, but physically tired. Um, and I always tell myself, oh, I shouldn't have trained. I shouldn't have trained. And inevitably, I always get injured. So, um, yes, please, if you are physically tired, your body hurts, you know, like, the best thing for you would be to go watch some TV, have some dinner, and sit on the couch, go and do that. Do not train. Uh, as far as masks on sale, yes, they are available. I posted uh, what one of them looked like in my Instagram stories earlier. So if you did not see them, go look. There are plenty of designs available. Uh, Emily, you can DM me after and we can chit chat about it and go from there. Um, why do I always count uh, my lovely sister-in-law? Why do I always carry gallons? Of Sorry, I accidentally paused. Why do I always uh, carry gallons of water with me? Uh, hydration, hydration, hydration. They are um, they are uh, filled with electrolytes usually half the time. Um, and then we are, um, I'm just hydrating because I sweat a lot. Um, because you are musically inclined, what song would you describe, Mike? And oh my God, please sing. <laughs> Hmm. What song would I use to describe Mike? Um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, something by Metallica, for sure. My wife knows me well. Because he's rock and roll. <laughs> um, and then singing, I don't know that it would come across well. What do you think, babe? Um, well, I think the, the ask is out there. Um, it has been asked by several people for you to sing. So what we're going to do is see, does anybody have any other questions, uh, to close the show out? And then I will give my wife, uh, and you guys the pleasure because it is going to be your pleasure and mine. Uh, I'm going to give you guys the pleasure of, uh, hearing, having my wife sing. Uh, we'll give her 30 seconds. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure, Casey Casey said. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's been asked about. Does anybody have any last questions before I close out the half guard half hour? Um, and yeah, if not, I'm going to turn the floor over to my wife. But before I do, uh, as I wait to see if there's any questions, um, guys, check it out. We have an amazing, amazing lineup coming up this weekend. Um, we have our lovely friend uh, and former clockwork student, Nicole, coming on to the show. She's training at Unity Jiu-Jitsu right now. Uh, we're going to discuss mental health. Sunday, uh, the one, the only, uh, the greatest uh, alive right now, or one of the greatest alive, in my opinion, Adam Peterson, black belt out of North-South uh, Jiu-Jitsu in Ju uh, New Jersey. Um, I don't have a gi limit, Charles. Um I have my own jujitsu closet. Um, and does. on Monday for the uh, special 420 edition of the Half Guard Half Hour, we have uh, none other than the black belt bartender himself, Sandy Nunez. Uh, and 
coming up, guys, Kyle Turbos, Phil O'Leary, our, our lovely and amazing friend Juan is going to be on the podcast. I've got some strength and conditioning coaches uh, coming up. So, guys, uh, with that being said, to close out, I'm going to let my wife do her magic because I think she's amazing, and I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to run into the bathroom because the acoustics are better. That's a woman who knows her music, and it also you can hide from the dogs. Okay, I'll do my best, guys. wasn't wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Half Guard Half Hour. Uh, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for tuning in. This episode will be available coming up on my YouTube channel and uh, Instagram TV, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we need. Emily says you need to be singing at the Met Opera. <laughs> guys, thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode. We love you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>